Six Flags is the largest amusement park chain in the United States and has been the operator of a large number of amusement parks over the course of nearly six decades. Here, I will be going through the list of each and every one of Six Flags' current 15 amusement parks and quickly giving my thoughts as to which coaster I think will be the next one to get the axe at each one of these parks. For Frontier City, there are a couple options I could have went with, but I ended up going with Diamondback, a very rare aerodynamics shuttle coaster model, which originally operated as one half of Lightning Loops at Six Flags Great Adventure. It opened at Frontier City in 1993, and just the fact that these are so rare nowadays and this one has stuck around for so long, I could see this getting the axe next at this park. Next up we have Great Escape, and this was a pretty clear pick for me. I'm going with Alpine Bobsled, which is a relocated bobsled coaster and Intamin bobsled coaster, which opened at Great Escape in 1998. This is another model that's becoming very outdated, pretty rare now. And I don't think this one will be around for many more years. Next up, we're going to Canada for La Ronde. For La Ronde, I had a little bit of a tough time deciding on which one I think would go. But ultimately, I settled on Boomerang, which is a 1984 Vacoma Boomerang model. This was actually the very first Vacoma Boomerang ever opened, and it did open at this park. Just the fact that it is so outdated at this point, I could see this leaving in the near future. Next up, we have the first of the Six Flags branded parks in the chain. We have Six Flags America. There are a couple options I could have went with here, but ultimately I decided on Batwing, which is a 2001 Vacoma Flying Dutchman model. As we know, Firehawk closed after the 2018 season at Kings Island, and Vacoma does not support these coasters anymore. It's very hard to get parts for these and replace things on them. And Batwing has not been operating a whole lot, so I don't see a very bright future for Batwing. Next up is the recently reacquired Six Flags Darien Lake. I ultimately chose Predator here, which was a pretty clear choice for me. This is a 1990 Den Corporation wooden coaster. Of course, it would be amazing if Six Flags gave this the good old RMC treatment, and hopefully that does happen in the future instead of scrapping this entirely. But Predator is just known as being an overall really terrible rough ride. I think its days are numbered, seeing as it's 30 years old at this point and most of these Din Corporation coasters are going by the wayside. Next up we have Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. We have Boomerang Coast to Coaster, another Vacoma Boomerang model. I chose this just because I don't really see any other coaster in the park going at any point soon, and this is a Boomerang model, so they could easily take this out and replace it with something small to medium size. It's a fairly small footprint, but this coaster is a more outdated model, probably isn't as popular anymore, and for that reason, I chose Boomerang Coast to Coaster. Moving over to Six Flags Fiesta Texas, this was a very difficult decision. I honestly do not see any of their coasters getting removed at any point soon, but I think Pandemonium would probably be the most likely. This is a spinning Gerslauer coaster which opened in 2007 at the park. It's a very family oriented thrill ride, looks like a lot of fun, and I think it'll be at the park for a very long time yet, but since I had to pick one, I went with Pandemonium. Next up, we have the park, which was the hardest one for me to make a selection at, Six Flags Great Adventure. This is another one where I doubt anything will be leaving at any point in the very near future, but since I had to pick a coaster, I ultimately decided on the 1996 Intamin indoor coaster known as Skull Mountain. This actually looks like a really good indoor coaster, I've heard some pretty good things about it. And I would hate to see it go, it's a very unique ride. I think it will probably be the next coaster to go from this park though, even though it still probably has at least a few years left in it yet. On the contrary, we have a park next that was a very, very easy pick, and I did not hesitate to make this selection, and that is Six Flags Great America with 1981's Intamin Racing Wooden Coaster known as American Eagle. This has been rumored for some time to get the RMC treatment, I think that would be amazing. This is a huge ride. 
I don't know if they actually would RMC it just because of the sheer length of the ride and there's two tracks. There would definitely have to be a lot of work done to this. It would be a very expensive project. And ultimately, I would hate to see American Eagle go because I think it looks like an awesome ride. It's very historic, but something does need to be done with this ride very, very soon. And Six Flags needs to make a decision as to whether they want to get new trains, put a lot of money into this ride, or whether they would just scrap it or convert it into something else. Next up, we have Six Flags Flagship Park, and that is Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. For Six Flags Magic Mountain, this was another pretty difficult park to make a selection at, but I did pick Superman Escape from Krypton, which is a 1997 Intamin launching shuttle coaster. This just doesn't seem to be that popular anymore, and I don't really see anything else at the park going at any point soon. We did just see the other one of this model get removed very recently in Australia, which was known as Tower of Terror 2. And since this ride is just not very common and it's kind of outdated at this point, I could see this getting the axe next. And it would open up quite a bit of space for a new attraction. Going to Mexico, we have Six Flags Mexico, and for this park, I chose, yet again, another Vacoma Boomerang known as Boomerang, which is a 1988 Boomerang. Once again, I don't really see anything else leaving this park anytime soon. This is such a common copy-paste coaster, and not only that, but this is one of the older Vacoma Boomerangs out there, opening in 1988. So for that reason, I think this will be the next to go. Going to Six Flags New England, this was a very obvious pick, and this is a relocated coaster from Six Flags Magic Mountain, and it is known as Goliath. This is a Vacoma giant inverted boomerang coaster, and it was known to be a very, very good ride in its original incarnation at Magic Mountain, but unfortunately after it moved to New England, they gave it new trains, and now it's known to be a very unpleasant ride experience and it doesn't operate that much anymore, I think Goliath will be going in the very near future at Six Flags New England. Going to Six Flags Over Georgia, one of the oldest Six Flags parks out there, I had to make a tough call here, and I decided on Georgia Scorcher, but this one has a little bit of an asterisk next to it. I think rather than removing the 1999 stand-up coaster Georgia Scorcher, I think they would give it the floorless treatment and give it B&M floorless trains like they've done with Mantis at Cedar Point and Vortex at California's Great America. It just seems to make a lot of sense. So I think Georgia Scorcher will either get converted or removed at some point in the near future, though I definitely see a conversion coming before a removal due to recent trends in the industry. Next, we're heading over to the original Six Flags Park, Six Flags Over Texas. And for this park, this was a very clear choice once again. And I'm going with La Vibora, which is a 1986 Intamin bobsled coaster. This did not originally open at Over Texas. It's a relocated coaster as it was part of the Six Flags Ride Rotation program back in the 80s. This is just something that isn't very popular anymore. Once again, it's becoming outdated. There's not a whole lot of them out there anymore. And I think this would open up a pretty significant chunk of space for a brand new attraction. And for those reasons, I think La Vibora will only be around for a few more years. Finally, coming to the end of the list here, we have Six Flags St. Louis. Six Flags St. Louis has a couple coasters that I think we could see get the axe at some point. But ultimately, I think Ninja is definitely the most likely, and hopefully that is the case, as I've heard this is one of the worst coasters out there. Some people even call it the worst roller coaster in the world. Ninja is really interesting. It opened in 1989, and it's actually a combination of a Vacoma and Aerodynamics looper, because Aerodynamics was not able to finish it due to filing for bankruptcy, so Vacoma had to step in, and they finished the ride. So, both both of them together just created one awful ride apparently. Do you agree with my picks? If you disagree, be sure to let me know what you think will be on its way out at each park. This is always a fun topic to discuss as we try to figure out what is in store for the future. As always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe if you would like to see more content like this on a weekly basis. I can also be found on Facebook as Coaster Daddy and Instagram as Coaster Daddy Official. I'll see you next time. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.